start beauty schools for the girls in the slums and villages and certify them and then get them into making their own money. The feedback that we've gotten here is that a lot of people don't want to invest in initiatives that are overseas and not here within the U.S. or L.A. I think it really depends on the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sure. The question is what, um, sort of what's the appetite for cross-border uh, cross initiatives and, and funding? So this lady has um, a beauty initiative that, and she's been encouraged by the government of India to start working with girls uh, and women in slums in India to provide beauty services. I'm completely butchering this, but I'm trying. Um, and, and she's gotten feedback that some people say that in the United States that they're, that they're a, not, possibly not interested in funding those initiatives or not interested in kind of the combination. I would say that really depends on the funder. Uh, I know the School Foundation, with whom I'm affiliated in certain ways, uh, has done a lot of global funding. Uh, I would also say if the government of India has uh, brought you in and welcomed you in, I would hope that there is also some financial support. And uh, it's, you know, it is a tricky thing. Most of our funding is done in Los Angeles, and I know from having done some overseas funding, it's either better to work with a, something, uh, an organization that's headquartered in the United States, uh, because of tax and financial considerations. There's also, we, we also, we just did something yesterday, we had to do a number of calls and wiring money overseas, and there's a lot of fraud that occurs with that, and especially it's been popping up more recently for foundations, so I think that, I think if there's a U.S. entity, so, yeah, so I don't, so I don't know that, I think it's just finding the right funder, uh, but I don't know that there's, because I think there are a lot of global funders who want to, and most of LA's, philanthropy is exported outside of LA anyway, so I think that there are a lot of global funders, unfortunately. Yes. One more Hi, Tara. Um, I'm the executive director of Card for NAMI, and we were in the LA 2050 this year. Um, so I just wanted to comment that uh, I felt like I got a lot of runway out of our proposal being on the website because even though we didn't get to the next rounds, um, it was nice that we were able to just have our proposal up and keep having people refer to it and be able to you know, understand what we we're trying to do. Um, really quick question about the letter of support. Is that something that you only provide for grantees and investees? Yes, so the, the first part was an accolade for the amazing Milo 2050 grants challenge which you all apply for. And the next question is about letter of support if you only do that for grantees. It's, it's really something that is only appropriate for us to do for grantees because we've taken that fiduciary risk with the grantees. But what I will say, I, I just want to, and I liked your submission, it was very cute. <laughs> um, I, what I will say is we are trying, and again, to the, to the point of being resource constrained and looking at what we've got, and we have five years worth of wonderful proposals that we pitch to other funders. We have, we have leveraged about $2 million directly from other funders of organizations who've applied to Minerally 2050 who've not been, received our money. So really, we're providing this platform. We're also turning it into a database that's in beta right now that is going to be launched next week that we're going to start using with smaller family foundations and next-gen philanthropists because a lot, of the, um, a lot of the millennial philanthropists and those who are kind of going to be part of the recipients of this tremendous intergenerational transfer of wealth like going online and having some control over the organizations they want to look at. So I do encourage you, it's not a complete selfish plug about my early 20 but we really are trying to provide as much benefit where we can. So, so thank you for that question. <laughs> so next, as Christine's giving mic, um, Christine will be talking about the direct investments and they have a unique structure within IEX and how they make investments, but she does, I believe they do global investments, so she may be able to answer your question a little better. I'm trying to fill space here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> One thing I also wanted to encourage you, those um, who are here in LA, LA Social Venture Partners, that's an organization that provides small grants. They work with you on your pitch and then there's a fast pitch, and that was that was the other like action goal thing. Oh, and Lacey, I mean, like, this is a tremendous resource, and they're, they're in the works of having some extra support for all of you, so thank you. Okay, can't answer your question, so we're gonna go to Christine. So my favorite part of this is that I didn't know Brent until now, but Maggie and Tara I love, and so now I have another friend that's coming up, Christine, who is a friend of Lacey. She's a senior advisor. Are you still a senior advisor, Lacey? Yeah. Um, and she's now president of IX Investments, and IX is a permanently capitalized holding company that provides individual and institutional investors 
a historic opportunity to create economic growth and catalytic social impact. So please welcome Christine. Um, so thanks so much everybody for having me. Thank you very much for organizing this event. I'm hopeful that you all can hear me just fine. Clearly I'm a lot shorter than when I speak. So anyway, um, just to give you all a little bit of an update or background, if you will, on IX Investments. And fundamentally, we are a commonly capitalized holding company. And I think that our model is rather different from a lot of the other models that you all have probably seen. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're out there hustling for money, trying to raise funds, etc., you're likely going to go to some sort of former investor who's, at, who's looking at a fund, right? We are not a fund. And I think, candidly speaking, we get a lot of cross eyes, if you will, when people try to look, uh, try to figure out exactly what it is that we're trying to do. Fundamentally, we're trying to prove out the hypothesis that you don't need to sacrifice returns, you can actually profit with for purpose. There's a ton of studies out there around environmentalism, and sustainability, and also just diversity inclusion, and again, and this goes on and on around what are the benefits of actually doing good, how much more money you can be making by being green, by actually being more inclusive, et cetera. So that part's kind of a little bit of the, the, the table stakes for us, if you will. Um, I think the next page probably shows a little bit more about why uh, Trevor and Howard, who founded IX, uh, thought of establishing first a permanently capitalized holding company. Fundamentally speaking, with funds, right? You've got a very fixed time horizon, Typically, funds are anywhere from three to seven years, maybe 10 years max. And candidly speaking, a lot of the big problems that we're trying to address cannot be met in that kind of time frame. And so we wanted to establish a vehicle and a methodology for actually being able to invest with a much more longer term time horizon. You know, Howard Warren Buffett is one of our founders. He's the grandson of Warren Buffett. And so candidly speaking, we're very inspired by the Berkshire Hathaway value investing model and methodology and how you want to think about this, that mindset. Um, secondly, again, same thing or relatedly to that with respect to the holding company model, the LPs and GP models, the alignment just isn't there with respect to the incentives, again, that long term vision. And lastly, um, we've got a whole bunch of transaction and operating costs associated with funds activities that we felt was kind of lacking. And so, in our particular case, you know, we are looking at investing in a multitude of different fields or a multi strategy platform. We invest in everything from, and I'll show you on this next slide, but everything that helps you combat climate change, addressing gender equality, uh, investments in media. We're also looking at uh, taking a look at affordable housing, workforce housing, um, and potential other platforms as well. But our model is, is that we don't necessarily need to have all the brainiacs on our team to be able to execute on this. And we seek to partner with other brains and other leaders who are much more knowledgeable and passionate and have a lot more experience in this particular state or particular areas to be able to invest with this. Um, I recognize I'm flying fast and low under the radar because we've got a little bit of a time uh, constraint, but I'm also happy to uh, answer any questions. Oh, I do? Fantastic. So I didn't have to consume the coffee so quickly. Okay. Uh, so, oh, sorry about that. Alright. Um, is this any better? Alright. So we've got, as you can see on the slide here, we've got a number of companies uh, that we've invested in. Uh, so renewable energy, we have uh, we're partnering with both the solar company as well as a municipal waste to biojet, to biofuels for jet fuel company. In those particular cases, uh, at least for waste fuel, it's an investment in an operating company. So we actually have an investor stake in that um, that's focused on activities in Latin America. With respect to commercial real estate, which is very much in line with my previous background as Chief Sustainability Officer of the United States, uh, we're partnering with a local real estate fund to build out a fund. Right, Canada, that's just how the real estate commercial development industry works. So we're developing our own impact fund associated with that. Uh, we're also seeking to address gender equality, as I touched on earlier. Slight nuance difference from a lot of the great work that people like Tracy and others are doing here. We're looking to really make investments in those areas that help unleash the economic productivity for women. So for example, and it, you know, the company could be founded by a woman or, uh, or a man, for that matter, candidly, or one of our first investments is in over-the-counter birth control programs. Uh, as a target demographic myself, task grab would be a great opportunity. Or what about like affordable and accessible child care? What about affordable and accessible child care for backup? stuff happens when a child calls and so the child gets sick, but you have to go to work the next day, right? 
moms and dads, we know what that's right. right? I mean, we've all been there. Thank goodness for the new button. Uh, we're also looking to make investments, I mentioned earlier, workforce housing, obviously a big issue here in California, both in LA and the Bay Area as well. You know, we're going to leverage a lot of the newer developments in both sustainable building design as well as the manufacturing methodologies associated with that. So how can we actually make a real impact there, deliver projects with steel? Um, and last but certainly not least, just to touch on this, uh, is food and ag space. Um, we're just trying to figure out what direction do we want to take it in. There's a great explosion of fantastic opportunities in this particular space, whether it be on ag tech or on the food science side of things. Uh, so those are some of the areas that we are really seeing. Um, so, you know, our approach, our approach focuses first and foremost on the economic return. So for those of you who are entrepreneurs in this room, focus on the economics. You've got to make sure that business makes sense, man, because that is where and how we're actually going to deploy the private capital that we need in order to be able to help address a lot of these bigger issues. Climate change is a great example, obviously near and dear to my heart. Um, we need to deploy $13.5 trillion over the next 10 years just to even address the big changes that are, going to, that are coming down the line. And you probably saw the, you want me to use yeah. I'm having a hard time hearing you. That's awesome. Uh, oh, awesome. Better? We may have to repeat yeah. something because there's a lot of stuff on that slide no one can hear you. Uh, secretly or maybe not so secretly now, I like karaoke, so this is probably a better way of, uh, 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 yeah, anyway. So, um, you want me to repeat this, some of the stuff? So, with respect to private capital deployment, I'm going to repeat this for emphasis. Focus on the economics. It's got to work, right? We need to deploy 